I hope everyone's doing well today. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. The superiority of calculus over algebra is demonstrated in this particular question. We have to solve it out in terms of the value of x that you can satisfy this equation. Hyperbolic cosine x plus hyperbolic sine x is equal to zero. How would you proceed? Bring the definition of hyperbolic cosine e to the x plus e to the minus x over two plus the definition of hyperbolic sine e to the x minus e to the minus x over two equals zero. Common denominator, bring everything under it and we will. When you do bring it, you notice this item cancels out with this. You have these two items which add this and that and you have two e to the x is equal to zero. If you want right here, you can simply cancel these out. You're looking at now e to the x is equal to zero. For the pre-calculus student, now they will go through the properties of logs. What they will do is x natural log e is equal to natural log zero. This is equal to one, x is equal to natural log zero and you end up finding out it's undefined because you run this on your calculator, it's undefined. So the student says, rightfully so for the algebra student, the pre-calculus student, there is no solution for this particular expression such that if you put a given value x here and a given value x here, the sum will equal to zero. It won't happen. One of the reasons why you can show that graphically is right here. This in its totality simplified to e to the x. When you're just looking at this part right here, you're looking at e to the x. That's what you are. When you look at it graphically, what do you have? That's what you have. But what stands out in this graph? There's a horizontal asymptote right here, y equals zero. This function right here never touches or intercepts the x-axis. There is no particular value such that you can do x in here and you can end up with a y output. That's what we're saying. We're putting a specific x here and we're ending a y output of zero. We don't see that because this function never touches the x-axis. It is asymptotic to that axis. Now that's our algebraic or pre-calculus problem and we come up here with a no solution. But what can you do when you start thinking in terms of calculus? When I'm looking at this function, it simplified to exponential. I'm saying this is equal to zero. And what do I do? I do a limit over here. Limit as x approaches a specific value. I know what this value is. This value here is what my answer will be because as x approaches that value, I can use it in this expression. You know what this value is. Read your graph. At which aspect of this function graph is your function approaching zero? And you know this right here is your function, f of x is equal to e to the x, but f of x here, your y value is equal to zero, e to the x is equal to zero, what value of x will give you that? And you know here a must be equal to minus infinity. And the calculus student would say my value here for x will be minus infinity. And it kind of makes sense. When you put e exponent minus infinity, you know you have one over e to the infinity and you're becoming zero over here. It's not 100% equal to zero, but you're approaching it so close to it that you can say it is zero. And that right here would be your answer from calculus. And now think about it, when you take that minus infinity and you put it over here, you're essentially saying you're doing hyperbolic cosine of minus infinity plus hyperbolic sine of minus infinity and it's equal to zero. And it kind of makes sense. If you look at the graph of these individually, what do you have? The hyperbolic cosine is a graph like this. The hyperbolic sine is a graph like this. As hyperbolic cosine has a minus infinity placed in it, it approaches positive infinity. As hyperbolic sine has minus infinity placed in it, you have a minus infinity come out because your function is approaching minus infinity. You add positive and minus infinity, you net them out, you'll get a zero. Technically, you don't add positive and minus infinity, but conceptually you can and say, yeah, positive infinity plus minus infinity, they cancel each other up. Hence, we get a value here of zero and it satisfies the value. Your algebra pre-calculus student will say this equation here has no solution. Your calculus student will say, yes, there is a solution. It's minus infinity. Then you can demonstrate it by means of this limit. Have a good day. Bye.